welcome to eforum talk show today we have sandeep karwa head of flipkart ads with us sandeep is an expert in integrating advertising strategies within flipkart ecosystem and pioneering advancements in e-commerce ad tech welcome to the show sandeep thank you ganjan thank you so much uh, yeah i'm happy i'm glad to be here on uh, with you today yeah sure sandeep flipkart reported you know more than 3300 crore of ad revenue in fy23 which was almost 50% jump compared to a year ago i would like you to elaborate on what unique features set it apart from other e-commerce advertising platform and maybe other digital advertising platform because no one has reported 50% jump in fy23 yeah so kanchan i i'll not going to specific numbers but i think we've seen some tremendous growth tremendous interest uh, from all our brand partners as well as sellers uh, onto onto flipkart uh, where we've seen them uh, looking forward to uh, not just advertising on some of those basic search led ads but also trying a lot of new formats and uh, and also exploring a lot more new concepts across the entire shopping funnel now uh, to your specific question what sets us apart or what is unique about flipkart ads uh, i believe one uh, which is probably common for all uh, e-commerce uh, setups is one the whole uh, uh, say complementarity of uh, what you do on flipkart while you where you are selling your products and when you go come and actually advertise uh, it's complementary uh, and it's also which leads to a lot more incrementality of uh, your business right uh, so these these are things which are helping brands uh, where brands are now able to measure what where they are spending and how they are spending and because of which brands are finding it far more interesting than going out and spending monies some play in places which can actually look very creative but they might not be able to measure it in totality right so this is something which has worked out really well and this is not something which is happening only in india across the globe if you look at uh, what's how china is uh, looking at retail media in a very very different lens how us is looking at retail media in a very different lens uh what what has been interesting and that's probably something which is common with uh, uh with india is that when we adapt to something we do it at a rapid pace we we move our uh, trajectories at a very rapid pace where something is working for us it doesn't like we don't take years and years to reach where a china or a us is uh, we we reach and we probably surpass them faster than uh, what one could imagine right and that's where it is working out today Uh, retail media is probably the most exciting and the most interesting space uh, in the country right now when it comes to ads uh, we are really fortunate that we i'm i am personally very fortunate that i'm i'm on this side of the world and i'm uh, getting a lot of opportunities to create innovative formats uh, create innovative tools for our brand partners as well as seller partners uh, to use flipkart yeah yeah i th- i think you, you are right you know saying retail media is growing leaps and bounds and as you mentioned about the measurement so i would like you to explain what metrics and analytics do you provide to advertisers to measure the performance of their campaigns and how do you foresee flipkart iris transforming the campaign evaluation and then thank you so much for asking about flipkart iris uh, and this is something which is very close to my heart i believe that it is something which flipkart has launched i mean this we launched flipkart iris earlier this year uh but we believe that okay this is just going to uh, create a hockey stick uh, change in the whole uh, world of advertisements uh, not just on flipkart uh, i think iris is going to enable and help brands in multiple ways not on on figuring out what products to build how and what probably what should be their communication what kind of specification they should be driving in and maybe what kind of ads they should do or where should they spend even in offline right but before i go more deeper into iris i would probably want to talk about the whole uh, campaign management which you specifically asked right see flipkart uh, like any other advertising platform advanced advertising platform uh, there are enough and more tools available for our advertisers where they can measure what they are doing by a campaign uh, they can look at at a complete holistic level that okay if they've spent certain x uh, million dollars on say uh, at a month level how that is working out what kind of roas what kind of returns they are getting on that campaign at a holistic level and then they can break it down at a campaign level they can break it that down at days weeks month level then they can see what happened before the campaign what happened post the campaign so some of these fundamental things is out there available to every brand and anyone who advertises on flipkart what we also provide in addition to that is where to put your monies i think this is where it becomes very interesting that okay where to so the recommendations the kind of 
uh, tools we've built uh, and i don't think so we we've done a full 10 on 10 job till uh, there's still a lot to be done there's work in progress where we are actually enhancing our recommendations we are actually going and providing signals to our brand partners as well as seller partners that okay these like think about it seasonality is a concept which uh, indian retail is now uh, now like say coming terms to if we think about us as shoppers most of our shopping decisions are linked to either a certain festival or an occasion or some event in our lives uh, with well now this is something which brands which a lot of global brands as well as a lot of brands which have been built in the country they don't understand completely while they know that okay they have built products for some specific use cases but how to use seasonality as a signal into retail and retail context is something which we come back with a lot of data and we help brands uh and hence i think campaign management is something which where we do a great job in getting our brands and sellers to understand uh, how to use uh, data while defining the campaign and then how to use data to say keep uh, improving on to their existing campaigns and as well as defining what their next campaign could be right coming to iris iris is an interesting place iris is not linked to ads we have not said that okay if you advertise on flipkart then we will tell you what iris is Iris is a place where we are actually offering all our brand partners a very intelligent way of looking at data on what's happening to to their brand, what's happening to the entire category, and uh, and ensuring that they understand what and where to focus their energies on. Right, and the beauty of Iris is it actually goes into the whole shopping funnel. So it starts at awareness, then goes into consideration, and then of course goes into the purchase. So allows brands to see what's happening to their brand or their product uh, on the awareness side uh, if 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 enough and more people are actually looking at their products or looking at the brand if if their brand products are getting enough and more impressions and how does that compare to the category average how does that compare to their leading competitors average and how does it compare to the leaderboard right of course we don't give them names of what's the competitor we are talking about or what the leaderboard is because that's like data which is not meant for them it so this is where we go out and uh, help brands to understand what's happening on the, each of these stages of the funnel then also there is enough and more uh, insights which we provide in in iris where uh, if a brand is selling say a product x and they want to know that okay when a consumer looks at product x and and if the consumer if she decides not to buy that product x what does she really look at and what does she buy so this is something which we also call as internally we call it as an alternate purchase report we enable brands with that now this is so powerful that brands can understand that okay hey, if a consumer is rejecting your product what what they are buying and hence from there deducing uh, what is really needed uh, to say probably change in their own product it helps them big way right so each of these things are becoming very very powerful uh, in the world where uh, where the product life cycles are coming down sharply because every every few quarters every few months we see some or the other new product launch or new brand launch and now with the world of d2c expanding so much uh, this is this is becoming far more uh, say a uh, first port of call for brands uh, ads is now it's it's i don't think so ads is an uh, something which wherein you start with ads and then you get data in in my view enabling brands with data and then figuring out them to come back and advertise on your platform is something how we are looking at iris as well as the whole data as an ecosystem yeah quite interesting sandeep i mean would you also like to tell us i mean which category of brands are aligned with you on iris or maybe number of brands which are there on iris if i'm if uh, if uh, like i'll maybe i'll get sonia to get you the exact number later on but uh, if my numbers are right uh, over 2000 brands are uh, which are enabled on iris and they are using iris uh, these are the brands uh, of different size and shapes so the legacy brands in the country and the large multi uh, conglomerates are using iris uh, brands which have been in the country for over 100 years are using iris and the brand which have which have launched in the country in last 10 months are also using iris so this is the wide spectrum of how iris is being deployed now now each of these brands have different objectives a lot of legacy brands are using iris to find out what's happening to the brand or what how consumers are reacting to uh, to their products and and the communication which they make across all channels the the newer brands or let me put them into the bracket called d2c brands for d2c brands where their their ways to reach to consumers either they would do their do it on their own dot coms or they would use a platform like flipkart to reach to their consumers 
for them this data is so so important because this data combined with their own dot com data is what is defining what products they want to launch or what kind of pricing they would want to do or what kind of communication they would want to go to right so and and that is also enabling them to do a lot of experiments uh, quick examples like for example if a brand was uh, seeing a dip in their awareness signals and then they decide to come back on flipkart and add, and create a an, uh, display campaign onto our flipkart homepage uh, they get an opportunity to look at iris at a weekly level and know that okay week 1 if they used a certain communication strategy or a creative strategy and change that into week 2 and change that into week 3 what happened to each of these weeks in terms of their awareness data in terms of their consideration data in terms of their purchase data so each of these things are tied together which allows brands of different sizes to use iris and use some of these data insights which we are enabling them uh, in a far more meaningful way than what we they would do earlier yeah yes andeep since you mentioned about you know serving specific marketing objectives of the brands so would you share any case study in any any brand which you which for which your you know your solution worked out really very well uh, I think I mean I can go. I, there are three, four uh, examples which are coming top of mind. But rather than getting into a brand specific uh, case study, I would probably tell some of those uh, general mission statements which brands are reaching out to us. Right? For example, a certain brand in uh, in the whole electronics and telecom, uh, the mobility and electronics space, they reached out uh, where they wanted to to create a campaign for whole uh, for for a new. Uh, uh, concept which they were launching with right and they wanted to not go with say sales as a core objective they wanted to see that okay uh, how if if they were to advertise on that concept how does that uh, concept land to consumers do consumers come and start searching for those keywords do consumers come back and look for those keywords do like do they see some offtake of those keywords onto google also right uh, in Google Trends, do they see some spike in Google Trends? So these were the objectives. And then they they wanted us to do a complete 360 on Flipkart and include off-platform, on-platform both. So that's where we actually were able to come back and create a very nice uh, campaign. Then there's a very big FMCG client uh, where we were where their objective was that, okay, hey, with the whole uh, spirit of uh, sporting events in the country, they wanted to drive a campaign where they wanted to use one of the sporting uh, events to create a communication to create a game out of it and they came to us and they reached out that okay they wanted to convert a game and anyone who plays that game on flipkart they should see some uh, innovation on uh, on their brand and their products and we were able to create like we created a shooting game for them right so similar to this there are enough and more uh, conversations which are happening right at the same time there is uh, there is the whole use of uh, some of our formats so there is some work which we have done on video, the some work which we have done on how do we bring, uh, like for example, in past we had a static banner. Now we have been able to create, uh, say, GIF-led banners. We have also been able to create video-led banners. Uh, we now also have banners where a, a brand can actually, uh, say, project in a carousal way three or four products. And each of those products have different landing pages. So each of these, while they sound very obvious to us now when we look at them, but each of these have been tech innovations. So thinking about that and getting into different objectives. When a brand wants to launch something, they don't want products. They want a banner which only talks about the concept or, or the idea of that entire launch. But when the brand actually is in a journey of building salience for their products, they want some of those products to come in those carousals and expect the consumers to click on those carousals. And they don't want consumers to land onto a brand store and go through some nice... Uh, in fact, that is very interesting. I mean, good. I, while I was answering your question, I, rem I was reminded of something very interesting. Now, there are brands which are actually in, you, very uniquely using uh, brand stores and, uh, and some of our... Uh, say browse pages and then also a product page a consumer when when because brands also have been enabled with signals to the point that if there is a consumer who is new to the brand let's say there is a brand x in the country and they are selling say certain chocolates on flipkart when our data tells them that okay this consumer is is new to your brand they want the consumer to be taken to the brand store because they want to do the storytelling. They want to talk about the legacy of the brand, what kind of flavors they have, what kind of different quality products have they, and what kind of quality processes they have when they've built those products. 
versus when there is a consumer who is coming who is a very regular customer of that brand. They don't want to take the consumer to a store and create one more hop. They want to take that consumer directly to a page where there are multiple variants listed or directly to a product page. So this, this is how brands are inter like interacting with us. These are how brands have now matured also. Uh, we have come to an era wherein each of mega brands have have massive teams who are only only required to solve for e-commerce uh, visibility and e-commerce advertisements right so this is these are very interesting times we are uh, very excited it's actually helping and it's a win-win uh, which allows us to also grow along with uh, most of our brand partners and seller partners yeah quite interesting yeah sandeep you also mentioned gaming integration i would like to understand how is it working and how do you plan to expand it so it is it is a very interesting space uh, uh, how do we expand it i think we would want to continue to be part playing part in almost anything and everything which comes uh, there's something which we are building for olympics there's something which we are hoping that okay we will continue to build as we go into the next year uh, have very nice con we would not want to go uh, because now sports as a thing which we now i mean especially when i'm speaking to you uh, we all know that okay how sports uh, unites or brings this entire country together right and there's like emotions which play out so well uh, last year when neera chopra got that gold or whether we won the world cup the kind of emotions which we have is really really amazing right and that brings in that whole notion that okay if some of those games were built on um, on on e-commerce apps where consumers anyway come to browse products look for uh, or, or probably even say do a bit of window shopping right uh, in that space if there are these interesting games appear and in those interesting games if there is an opportunity for brands to drive communication or land the message uh, while the consumer is playing game right so this is where it is uh, i'll give you a very exam interesting example we we have a cricket game uh, and while consumers are playing cricket on on the flipkart app it's a, it's just very nice simple game where the consumers have to click two three buttons or two three points on the screen and they can play shots and it's a very simple nice game people enjoy playing that game a lot of people spend hours or like at least half an hour uh, playing that game now in that game while someone is playing that shot there is a there's this holding which is available on that game screen and we created a brand ad on that holding so it it while it did not come as an intrusion but it was also landing that brand uh, while someone was playing a cricket game right so these are innovations which we are looking forward to uh, i don't think so i am in a place or position to tell that okay uh, like what all is possible i think so much more is possible uh, and even say personalizing a lot of these games could be also out there uh, gamifying some of these solutions could be there where you can actually get consumers to do certain actions in against those actions they can actually get some coins or they can get some discounts or so and so forth right so these are things which are out there in future uh, we are very interested excited and especially now with festive coming in big billion days coming in some of these things could actually become very very interesting yeah you mentioned about olympics as well would you like to maybe share something more on that so olympics is where the, there are a couple of brands who have uh, official rights and they they are they are the the they they are the sponsors or they are probably associated with olympics they have come back to us on some of those bits it's still work in progress so i would not want to expand a lot on that but this is how we are integrating some of their communication so this is where again i think kanchan going back to my earlier point that brands have come a long way from you looking at e-commerce or looking at retail to drive their sales they are using e-commerce to drive awareness about the brand drive that 360 message about the brand it because there is interesting data out there uh, a lot of visibility on e-commerce sites is actually defining not just e-commerce sales but is also defining what gets bought anywhere else also so let me go out and say this out loudly that a lot of things which we are doing on flipkart and what how brands actually use flipkart to make their communication it also helps those brand to drive their offline sales also right so there's a lot happening in that space because unlike a lot of other markets uh, where uh, tech, where where there was a very sequential progress of technology or where sequential and a democratic progress of technology india happens to be a country where we've leapfrogged we've leapfrogged from 2g to 4g we've leapfrogged from uh, 
like maybe we skipped laptops as a complete product category. A lot of Indians have not seen laptop, but they've seen, they've experienced internet for the first time on a mobile phone, right? The data uh, reach or the data penetration or the information penetration is at a very different level. And then also we are a very, very young country, right? The number of Gen Z customers we have uh, are probably more than some like more than population of many, many, many countries, right? So when we are in that space, uh, the most important part, I believe, is that how do you use this as an opportunity? How do you enable your brands and partners on this and get them to talk to them uh, on e-commerce? Because e-commerce is where they are, right? And use that as an opportunity of creating the entire funnel, not just purchase. Because if, if you focus only on purchase, you don't need to do a lot of spend on e-commerce, right? You can actually take a lot of search ads and listing ads and you can uh, still solve for it. But display ads, some of our video ads, some of our new gamified formats is where uh, brands are finding a lot more interest now. Mm -hmm. I hope I was able to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you please also explain how do you leverage machine learning and AI to optimize uh, ad targeting and improve campaign performance? I would sound really foolish if I if I were to say that okay I know it completely uh, it's a it's probably the start of that whole world but it is it is a very very promising uh, times where we are living into uh, I've said this in multiple forums also before this that uh, AI is not taking away jobs AI is just enhancing jobs AI is going to come and just change the way we thought that creativity could come through. Right. Uh, AI is going to ensure that personalization finds a complete new definition uh, because now you can use, you can, you can process large sets of data, which earlier was not possible to. Now, when you're processing large sets of data, your end goal or end solutions are going to be far more sharper than what you were doing earlier. I don't think so. Targeted ads is something new. Targeted ads have been done for a long time. But each of those targeted ads, if you were to talk to marketeers and advertisers, they would all confess that each of those targeted ads had some or the other leakage. Right? But now with this, I believe there is so much happening wherein this leakage is going to keep coming down because now you can talk to an individual in a language at the time of the day in a creative format with a call to action, which is very, very much personalized to that person. Now, she if she doesn't like dark backgrounds on the creative and she's a person who actually likes pastel colors you can actually have a creative which is customized for her versus there is a consumer who wants to see only discounts as the messaging or is actually hooked on to messaging he gets to see discounts on the banners this is possible now which earlier was not possible right so this is one area which we, i am very very pers excited personally but i don't think so anyone anyone in the world can claim that they have started to use ai to uh, full potential uh, i believe everyone is in that process uh, where they have started to use ai they have started to use machine learning in figuring out right contextual ads targeted ads uh, getting more innovation on creative side etc uh, it's still a progress. I believe we ourselves are a massive work in progress on that front, but we are making serious investments into that space so that our brand partners who are very excited about this, our seller partners who are very excited about this. I mean, I'll give you a very small example about that. We work with a few hundred thousand sellers. Each of those sellers don't have, uh, say, uh, say, creative bandwidth or don't have those kind of budgets to hire ad agencies to build banners, to build creatives. Now AI allows them to use, give some prompts and you can actually create a banner out of uh, what you wanted to and use, bring that banner onto Flipkart and use that, right? Now we've, we've built those tools. We are going to soon launch those tools for our sellers. I mean, we are going to soon, meaning hopefully within the next few weeks, we'll be launching that. This is where I believe the most excitement, uh, I have the most excitement. Uh, and I believe this is going to be very, very big game changing moment in the whole advertising as a space. What are you going to call this? Uh, we, uh, we've not yet decided how to call this, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's a bit few of few weeks away at least, but it's going to be part of our seller uh, whole ecosystem, which we have. Yeah. Okay. Achha, Sandhi, what trends do you see, you know, shaping the next generation advertising strategies, you know, kind of emerging ad tech solutions? Okay. Uh, I think the whole uh, big one, couple of big trends. One is retail media, as I said earlier, retail media is something where every brand 
uh, is super excited and they see the writing on the wall they they understand this data they know that okay one consumers are finding and researching about their products on e-commerce two e-commerce also has an ability to measure whatever they spend three e-commerce has an ability to reach far remote corners of this country in a very very targeted way right so this is where the big trend is that okay retail media is probably the the most exciting part of advertising space in the country right now i don't have numbers on how much it's growing or i, I believe that it's probably the fastest growing uh, advertising space in the country right now second big trend is the the brands are also understanding that they need to communicate and they need to talk in a very unique way to different kinds of consumers right again as a country we are where there is a sizable gen z customer base then a sizable millennials where a lot of money is out there and hence all premiumization all of those conversations are happening for millennials and then there's a sizable uh, earlier generations right how do you talk to each of these consumer bases in languages in communication strategies which works for each of them right now of course there are brands which which don't have products across all the spectrum but then there are brands which have products across the spectrum right and they want to talk to every consumer base in a very unique way so this is the second big trend that on advertising how to talk to each of the customer users customers uh, in a very unique way it's not just the communication strategy but it also uh, is involving what occasions to participate there there's a brand which participates in valentines day and then the same brand also participates in ganesh chaturthi and the same brand then goes out and spends enough and more money in the whole month of december because that's the month where people travel where each of these of occasions could be talking to completely different set of consumers so that's another big trend which is coming through third i think uh, uh, each of each of these brands um, small big uh, size brands they are they are investing a lot behind people uh, and people especially on uh, who can understand data and who can understand analytics of each of what what's happening so Iris kind of platforms is an outcome of that need. Iris is a platform which came uh, into its form and shape when there were a lot of brands which came back to us asking for more and more data. Brands wanted to know what's happening to the campaign, what's also happening in the category generally. Uh, so we figured out way to come bring all of this together for building Iris. So these are larger trends, Kanchan, in my view, uh, which are shaping the advertising industry. So now the last question. you already explained iris and you know creative tools and gaming innovations that are coming up but overall you know about flipkart ads i would like to understand what are your expansion and growth plans okay so uh, we will continue to innovate innovate on ad formats uh, there are enough and more new ad formats which we are building uh, we are like things on because a lot of our ad formats today are click based uh, uh, we are looking at ad formats which are swipe based because that's the consumer how consumers are interacting with platforms now they would want to swipe up swipe down swipe left swipe right so how do you build ad formats which are talking to this kind of uh, ways of using uh, right then there is innovation which is happening on the whole uh, consumer funnel when the consumers are on the search when a consumer keyed in some search query how do you ensure that brands which otherwise would have not popped up in the first four or five results how do, how can you bring them up right in an inorganic way so that's a lot of innovation which we are doing while these are called the listing ads where a lot of work has already happened but how do you make sure that personalization happens how do you use signals from uh, device id how do you use a lot of consumer uh, purchase browse data and find ways to get them show them what's most relevant for them right third bit is how do you also go off the platform Uh, so some work which we are doing with our our uh, logistics partners ecart on how to use the reach which ecart has ecart has a like phenomenal reach so what do we do offline what do we do on the packaging what how do we monetize some of the other aspects which we have in the ecosystem and ensure that brands have a way to tell their story uh, so so a lot of stuff happening uh, so i think these are the big trends uh i believe i hope that uh, we will continue to grow uh, at the numbers which you spoke earlier in the opening remarks I, i would not want to confirm any of those numbers but the kind of growth which we are uh, seeing right now we hope to continue on to that growth quarter on quarter uh, because this is extremely important from the overall larger uh, flipkart profitability goals also 
Sandeep, we reported those numbers, you know, we're taking out from your financial report. So you need not to worry about the numbers. So thank you so much, Sandeep, for taking time out to speak with us. Thank, thank you so much, Ganjan. Thank you. Thank you.